Hello friends, this is Odds, and some of you know me as a big time DVD nerd or enthusiast, if we use a kinder word. I started playing this game in 2017, and I played for almost 11,000 hours at this point. But my friends today that join me, Cope and Running Man, have me beat. I believe both have been playing for longer than I have, and both have more hours than I do even. And they are as nerdy and as passionate for DVD as it gets. And today, we're going to go down a memory trip into all of the beautiful things that this game had to offer. All the amazing, nostalgic, horrible features that this game had. So that if you feel bad about DVD now, you can look back and be like, wow, it was actually so much worse. And our first topic is going to be the actual infinite loops that used to exist in the game. But before we delve into it, what's up, guys? Anything you want to say to our audience? Running man first. Hey, what's going on? Uh, yeah, I do have a lot of hours in DVD. I have experienced every every affliction that we're going to discuss today. I have at length experienced. So you you played this game to... since the beta, right? Like since the very yeah. First... No, I I was like a week after launch, so like a week after release. I wasn't a day one player. Damn, unfortunately, but like Not... a week later. I mean, it's I been started. seven years, so what's one week? Yeah. And how, yeah, about, how about you, Cobb? Did you get on the train early, or did it take you a while? I played the game on the second day, actually, after release, and boy, oh boy, just there have been a lot of crazy things, and continue to be a lot of crazy things, and I can tell you that it feels like nothing has really changed. <laughs> All right, so more. could you guys tell me, because when I started playing the game, this was still a bit of a thing. I remember vividly, I was playing Huntress in the Fracture Cow shit, and I was like, okay, I'm going to kill this guy. And I couldn't catch him. I spent five gens chasing a guy, going through two windows, and I couldn't catch him. And this was a thing for many years. What were the actual infinites, which is something that doesn't really exist in the game anymore, but people still kind of refer to it. Could you... Enlighten me. I mean, doesn't everybody remember Fractured Cowshed? I think it was like the original, like, I think I was, if I can remember correctly, that was like the, the infinite loop was the main building on Fractured Cowshed. Because like back window. then, back then killers, so long big killers did not have bloodlust. No. And I believe even windows didn't get blocked by nope. entities. No, ent no entity blocker. So, 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 what, so what would happen if you just run around it? You literally you leave the loop or you or you just run forever. Um, a lot of us would play Trapper to try and avoid because I was a killer main back then. Mm -hmm. uh, we would play Trapper to try to avoid that, right? That was like the only thing you could do before Nurse came out. The only thing you could do about Infinite was Trapper, right? But then if you had a team in comms, they would literally come mid chase and disarm your trap. So you could be running somebody on an Infinite, and put a trap down, and then by the time you make the loop around again, a teammate's already disarmed the trap. And that was like the only thing you had. Was the, uh, was the ability to, to also to set a trap, uh, back so. in the day? Trapper needed like five seconds to lay down trap, and yeah, it, it was was, it was pretty awkwardly slow. <laughs> Absolutely do, terrible. Do you remember it fondly, uh, Cope? Was there any map? I remember, for example, um, Iron Works of Misery had a, it now has a window and a space next to it. Yeah. That space didn't exist. It was just a window, and I do remember like playing certain killers and just. Like, even after Bloodlust existed, those windows were almost like infinite, and they were disgusting. Absolutely yeah. disgusting. So I was playing, I remember I was playing, you know, full-time, I was streaming on Twitch, playing Killer, and yeah, that, that, that window specifically was, like, one of the thorns in my side. Like, I used to rant about it on stream all the time, and the day that they made the big change, one of the community managers was in my chat, and they were like, check your DMs, and I checked my DMs, and there was, like, a screenshot of them putting the the door there <laughs> next them, to the window it and I was took like, them so many years yeah oh, it was so Lord. it was just like but it was like i heard a choir of angels like finally this map is not going to be an instant dc you know uh, did so you I guys did, did, you, did you guys abuse them as a survivor absolutely so, yeah 100 100 percent. i i did not play killer back then but i did abuse those windows a little bit and then i was thinking this is a little too cheap for me so i stopped my i guess like favorite place mm -hmm. that i kept going to was azarov's actually wretched shop all three windows were open at the time so that was something wretched shop oh of course the the one with the car oh <gasps> wow that's disgusting uh even in more modern days i remember when balance landing gave you a passive 
um, softer landing, you could bring yourself to certain maps and survivors, you, they would drop from the top window into the bottom window, into the top window. I, I remember going in private games to try to figure out how to outplay survivors in Haddonfield, which was like one of the most annoying things ever. So, yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I guess Bamboozle also came out at one point. So now you have tools to deal with this. Just be grateful it wasn't that bad. Do you guys want to move on to the next topic? Yeah, let's do it. We shall. The next one is hatch standoffs and the lack of endgame collapse. Uh, th I'm, I'm going to cover the last one real quick. The endgame collapse is a thing that starts when the exit gates are, uh, are open. You can even open them yourselves as a killer, which wasn't the case before. And then it's a timer where in two to four minutes the game's going to end. But that did not exist. The end games used to be very, very long sometimes. And on top of that, if there was one survivor, one kill left, and they made up the hatch, what happened? Our, our friends are going to explain it. Good old fashioned oh, hatch end up. I don't remember. So, you guys know Lefty, the entity's left hand, right? Yeah. He's beloved, like, like world. Yeah, beloved Trapper main. Yeah, he's like world famous for his long hatch standoff. So, mm. essentially, right? Like, you get to the hatch and there was no you weren't able to close the hatch back then yeah the killer didn't have so, the prompt to close it yeah so the killer would get to the hatch the survivor would get to the hatch and then they'd be standing there so at that point if you strike the survivor with an m1 right they're able to take the hatch and win and during your recovery during the recovery the, the hit recovery but if they if they were to click on the hatch you were able to grab kind of similar to the way you can like grab off of an unhook or grab yeah. off of a gen right so yeah you were in a stalemate basically the first person to take an action would lose right so you just had to wait for the other person to so take you an could action. wait an hour an hour an hour and then hit them and if they were there or they reacted quick enough they got the hatch or jump into it and if they were there they would grab you so it was a standard because it didn't have an end and back then there wasn't like a server uh shutdown the game did not end after one hour like it does now or after two hours no. like it used to it could go on forever do you what do you guys think is the longest recorded hatch standoff i wish i could remember lefties lefty had one that was over 10 hours it was so <laughs> long it was yeah and it was it was the funniest thing i was watching it when it was happening and of course chat, was, chat's going chat's going wild hours. 10 hours, hours. Yeah. It was more than that. I don't. I wish I remembered the actual number. I could. You know, we could hit him up and ask him. I'm sure he remembers. But it was so long. He was there all day. He refused to do it. I went. And then the, my favorite part. This is my like the cherry on the on the Sunday. Right. Is after. Finally, finally, the survivor tried to jump in. Lefty grabbed him. Lefty gets the win after waiting all that time. Right. And in the post game chat, the survivor called him sweaty. <laughs> said you were so sweaty you couldn't just let me have the hatch you're no, so sweaty after 10 so hours plus okay. it's like man you both waited dude like what's the longest you guys have done it i i think i did it for a couple minutes but i i'm I, right there with you only a couple minutes i love i love that the in-game collapse exists as it is mm -hmm. with games just going on forever like you two said the oh, game man. finally ends so you yeah. don't have to deal oh yeah with that that's anymore. that's another thing like survivors could like they could heal so quickly they could basically hide and just hold you in a game for as long as they wanted that was really yeah. really awkward very happy that this is over shall we move on to the next topic yeah absolutely Do it. the next one is the nurse with seven blinks now um a bit of backstory the nurse had a variety of add-ons that gave her blinks sometimes they would get more than one blink she had three by default uh and these add-ons had some downsides and some things uh, for the most part, going for seven blinks or five blinks, which you could do at the time, um, it was really overkill and kind of unnecessary. Uh, but even just get, getting three blinks or two, or two blinks with the faster teleport, that was already really, really good. So, yeah, you had a lot of options. And all of them felt extremely bad on the survivor side. I do remember this one quite a bit. What are your experiences, uh, Cope? This one's pretty straightforward. She had seven blinks, up to seven blinks with her add-ons, as you noted, mm -hmm. and three blinks by default. So I guess you're just not good enough if you miss, or rather <laughs> if you dodge four of them and you get hit by the fifth one. It was that kind of scenario back then. That would be the worst feeling. You'd be like, like you see a nurse and you're like, okay. It was an absolute go nightmare. On, go on, and then you teleport. And then you tell, and then she teleports, and then you hold your breath and see if she's gonna have three or four. And when she does, you go like, "Okay, you're, all right, whatever, dude, whatever. Well, Just get your down, dude, whatever." 
But allow me, though, to play the devil's advocate here as a killer main when okay. the Earth release. Like, I had spent the prior months being ran on infinite loops, <laughs> being abused in games. Like, there's nothing you can do to catch me. You lose, you lose, you lose. So part of it, like, yeah, it's terrible. I'm glad it's gone. It never, ever should come back. But there was a nice little period of time there where it felt nice to be able to, the, to kind the, of turn it around balance, and be able to be the like, balance okay. Reach, yeah. Like, like the, the, the scales tip to a point yeah, of equilibrium we're, we're for a brief moment. We're, we're the power roll again, right? Like now we're the power. Now, okay, your infinite loops don't mean anything now. Like, yeah. We're good. Well, eventually but they yeah. would remove all of this and the nurse, other than with some crazy gimmicky add-ons, she would have a average two blinks. And eventually they would also remove the add-ons that made her blinks faster, the Omega uh, blink nurse. Oh. But the funniest part is that when these nerfs were suggested, a lot of players were like, wow, no, like nurse is the only thing keeping survivors at bay. This is going to kill the game. Uh, she's a high skill ceiling killer. A lot of people complain about it. And guess what? They still play the nurse, you know? Like, yeah. they, like she's still strong. She's still possibly the best character. So it's Agreed. kind of funny. Undoubtedly. Move on to the next topic. The Prayer Beat Bracelet Spirit. Oh, boy. This is what I was getting into the game. And after I had really started to to get invested, so I was fully in there for this one. So before her add-on rework, the spirit had an add-on called Prayer Beat Bracelet. It was a purple add-on that did one simple thing. It did only one thing. So how bad can it really be, uh, Running Man? Yeah, it's pretty bad. So basically the prayer beads, right, would make it so you would not hear that the, the spirit was teleporting. She's phasing. So you just be on a gen, minding your business, and then next thing you know, you're getting pulled off or getting slapped. Yeah, so imagine a Myers in Tier 1 that can grab you when you're looking away, but this one can literally just teleport next to you. Like, yeah, you just, just teleport next to you. She makes no noise whatsoever. I also had the pleasure of playing against Samantha, who was at the time known as one of the meanest spirits out there. And she would run this build with Devour Hope and throw the hunt, so that if you did a totem, she would get a warning. So you would do gens and you would get grabbed. You would do totems and you would get grabbed. No warning whatsoever, you just didn't know, unless everyone on the team was on comms and calling her out constantly. And even then you had to guess because she didn't have any animation or sound or anything like that, right? And eventually you would just die to devour hope and it was completely unavoidable. And that felt awful. It felt awful. You would load into a game and instead of being a little bit afraid that it might be a stealth killer or something, you would just you just couldn't do jets. You had to like tap them on stuff. So it was really, really, really scary and supremely annoying. Cole, how do you deal with it? This topic is giving me slight trauma from <laughs> how often I saw it. I you both already hit it perfectly. You tried to do a generator, you got grabbed, you tried to do a totem slowly. Due to like thrill of the hunt or something, you got grabbed. You stand still. You get grabbed magically. I don't know. Uh, oh, oh. Um, uh, maybe worth mentioning. Back then, the spirit had collision with survivors. So if she ran into you, she could feel you. So she didn't even have to guess which side of the gen you were on. And her other add-ons were also even more ridiculous. So she could make it very, very, very far. Very, very far. And even have Strider, so that even any survivor that had Iron Will, she would still hear you even when injured. So her counterplay was really, really limited. You remember anything I don't else? Know if, uh, I don't know if Cope remembers this, but I actually played Spirit, uh, Prayer Beat Spirit against Cope one time. Oh. And then yeah, I, did. I let him go. <laughs> and I, yeah, I DM'd him afterwards to apologize. Because this is back when you could you could fix it, you know? you were Because like, you used to be able to change your killer and change your loadout. Like, you know, oh, oh right, yeah. Back so, then, back then, I, if you recognize someone on the on the lobby, you could switch yeah. to the sweatiest nurse yeah. a build you could or anything. <laughs> so I was doing requests back then. So I was like, okay. And I didn't dodge. So, I mean, because this is, I think this is back when queues were really bad. So I was like, I don't want to dodge. Cope will forgive me. And it took him a little while to talk to me. Cope, after that. Uh, it's been a few but, years. Yeah. Do we extend that olive branch or? All forgiven, all forgotten, or some sins are too heavy. All forgiven. It's been long enough. You know what's the oh funny part? God. I've actually played myself against Cope. I don't know how we ended up in other people in, in his lobbies, but I guess that was back when, you know, there was no crossplay and stuff. And Cope is one of the finest survivors that I've ever played against, honestly. Sure. Um, You're one of the finest trappers that I still remember. To you are one of the killers of all time at Starva. Thank you, thank you, Cope. Oh. I appreciate your 
your beautiful compliments. Anyway, uh, moving on to the next topic before we start crying. The original Metal of Man. The perk oh that nowadays is a bit of a meme that broke the game for how long? A week or two until it got patched. Uh, Cobb, you wanna you wanna run run the audience through what the original Metal Man did? So if I remember correctly, you had to take three protection hits for Metal of Man to activate. Nope, just normal hits. hits. Just normal hits. Just just getting hit. Activated it. You remember it now? Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Now I do. <laughs> three normal hits. And then you get your endurance, but I believe the killer could have seen you within a certain range. Uh, if I recall uh, correctly. Afterwards, if you heal, it was the same as now. Uh, like after the perk triggered, the killer had already lost the game, so it didn't really matter. But after the perk triggered and did its effect, if you healed and then walked away from the killer, he could see you from a distance, which is not even a big deal. But yeah, okay. after you so... take three basic attacks, three attacks, your fourth uh when you're injured you just tanked the hit you didn't even get endurance as far as i remember like you just yep. tanked it so yeah, like you could you could hit, you could yeah. get yeah you could get adrenaline right after or use an insta heal right after uh remember that medkits had the syringes and the styptics to immediately heal yourself for a long time so you could believe tank it or it. not believe it or not i did not really use metal of man so i was I was a you little must lost, have, you but... must have been a bit on vacation or something because this perk really dominated. Running man, you want to walk us through what was the normal, um, like circumstance? Because it's three hits, right? So you take one hit, yeah. You 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 get injured, another hit, go down. Then you get unhooked, you get you get healed. You take another hit. Now, bam! What happens? Yeah, they're just gonna keep on taking hits all game. It was frustrating, but you know what's funny is like I was kind of a little scamp about the whole thing i was saying that i didn't think it was that big of a deal i was like i just need a nerf it's fine like really again i mean i yeah i know i played a lot of instant down killers though oh of course, billy a lot of course. okay then. we're gonna get to that I played billy i played billy i played myers i played <laughs> killers that you know so i was like all oh, these guys whining about metal man it's not that bad but then i mean obviously looking at what we look at now and if you look at the player base now that yeah. that perk on the player base now would be obscene, i mean right? i mean how is it that different from for example Metal, uh, Metal of Man compared to Off the Record. The thing is, if you compare it to Off the Record, yeah, you have to hit a survivor like four times, even when they're injured, right? But that's when you're tunneling them. That's when you're going right after them. With this perk, the perk enabled, it, uh, it, it, it was enabled, um, and then you could just go do stuff and do, go take hits for other people and tank, tank hits in the end game and, and rescue other people without any risk. And the thing about this perk that was so cruel is that it didn't work on Nurse because it was special. It didn't work on on any killer, really, that, that was pretty strong. Nurse, Huntress, Hailbilly were maybe the, the strongest killers around that time, or at least some of them. This was just a massive kick in the ass for Trapper, for Wraith, for Clown, for basically every other killer like that. So it was really, really awful. It's and also yeah. very interesting... Really quickly, it's also very interesting to me how at times you can never release like Ash is released, Metal of Man, Flip Flop, and Buckle Up. One perk is arguably the worst perk in the game. Flip Flop yeah. has its uses, it's fun, but you know, not everybody's going to complain about something like that. And then Metal of Man happens, so. Uh, in the span of one week, every survivor, every lobby had three perks like this, like two or three perks like this. Yeah. Everyone bought it. And then they nerfed it, and then they sold a billion Gorillion uh ash versus the evil dead dlcs which is a incredible incredible marketing move in my opinion yeah they did the old league of legends tech right release it super broken everybody buys it then they nerf it yeah it's good you guys want to know what's coming after this can't wait lesion on release oh, i'm so salty arguably, about this I'm so arguably salty. the worst time in dbd history right like, really I mean, it's it's got to be discussed as like the worst period of time oh, in the game's gosh. meta at this oh. point, I don't. I can't think of a worse one. Yeah, right. So I'll tell you about the original Orman uh, before we go into Legion. The original Orman had a similar size as the current one, except uh, in the area opposite from the shack, it had three jungle gyms right next to each other, like like stacked right next to each other. It also had a crane that doesn't spawn anymore. Um, it had the the main building had the same pallets it does now but I think it's spawned even more. And some of the filler pallets that we have now, they just didn't, they just didn't exist. We just had more jungle gyms. So it was like a map with like 
I don't know, like eight jungle gyms or, or maze tiles. It was absolutely insane. Absolutely insane. So that was terrible. And for many years, Survivors bringing you an Ormond offering was like the place to bring the killer to absolutely destroy him. Many people, I remember, would consider it the, the most Survivor sided map in the game. Kind of like we looked at Eerie when it came out. Similar, similar vibe. And, and then we have Legion, who at the time was 110 killer. Didn't have the ability of getting faster after hitting. Didn't have the ability to insta down the fifth hit like he does now. What did he have, uh, Cope and Running Man? Okay, I... I mean, you want me to say again? I did I, I say, no, well, I, no, I was a Legion, I was a Legion main during that time, so... Disgusting, but... Uh, yeah, I'll, oh yeah. Oh, well. Let me, let me briefly say this. This was probably, in my opinion, the worst time that this game ever went through. The Legion could do what was called moonwalking back then. Mm -hmm. You could hit someone in Fail Frenzy and whatnot, put them in Deep Wound, and then yeah. moonwalking, which means that you drop the chase, you stop looking at the survivor mid-chase. Let's say you just track their blood or their scratch marks. One tiny, no one, one tiny note. Uh, back then, Deep Wound didn't pause if you were running. It didn't nope. pause. Nope. It it went down um, when the killer was not chasing you. So essentially, what Cope is describing is Legion would hit you, aff aff afflict you with the Deep Wound status, and then chase you while looking at the ground, and the game would think that you're not being chased. So you would slowly bleed out, and in a matter of just seconds, you're just. To the down, no matter what. Mm -hmm. I lost my sanity instantly after dealing with that so many times. Okay, so I never did that. Never once. Not even not even when it first not happened. Even not even when we were discovering it. Okay. What I did was permanently equipped Frank's mixtape, which I was a different oh, which was a, okay. it's a different way to guarantee it down, right? Because with Frank's mixtape in the original form, you would you when you hit them out of frenzy, it would remove like a huge chunk of their bar. But if you hit them while they were still in deep wounds, it would take more of the bar. So you could instant down. Basically, they could not escape no matter yeah, what. Yeah, basically, you stay on them. it was uh, with that and the, what was the other add on call? I think it's the stab wound study or something. Stab wound study. Yeah. You, 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 yeah, basically, study. you basically hit you them study. twice with your power and they went down. And it took a little yep. bit, but it was mostly unavoidable. Uh, other things that mm. Legion was kind of fun. The One of the things that I did with Legion back in the day before they changed him is he's special attack technically counted as an attack so you could usually would say the best for last so you could actually like in your first few seconds of the match hit a bunch of survivors and have six or seven stacks in your first chase which was kind of funny um but the thing that frustrated me about, about uh, a lot about legion is that during the ptb uh we quickly figured out the whole moonwalking thing and looking at the ground to lose chase and i tried i remember going into another streamer's chat and rating them, and I was like, hey, yo, I like this new killer, what do you guys think of them? And I think it has a bit of potential, because it's got this it's got this little uh, quirky playstyle to down survivors. And everyone was like, nah, it's, you're stupid, what do you mean, he's 110, just run no miter, LMA, oh, it's super easy, right? And then, from the PTP to the life, they did one super, super important thing. Uh, they changed the way the deep wound timer worked, because before, I think it didn't it didn't really go down in terror radius or something. So from the PTB to life, in the PTB, believe it or not, you couldn't do that so easily because survivors could, uh, they could mend mid-chase, right? Like they could mend it. But I don't know what they did on live release. They removed that and mending mid-chase was basically impossible. And it made it so that even the best survivor, if the Legion wanted to cheese them, in a set amount of time, depending on add-ons, you would just go down and flop on the ground. And this was so Sorry. unbelievably boring that people really, really, really disliked it. To the point where they would just quit the game. I remember so many people that I knew personally just taking a break. They said, I can't do this. Wow. And yeah, I, uh, I have a funny story too. I'm not going to name names here, but prominent DVD survivor main whose name starts point. with <laughs> yeah no, no, just no, kidding. No, i'm not gonna do all that i'm not gonna let the commenters have fun with that no but prominent dvd survivor main uh literally banned me from their channel for a period of time because i ran i ran frank's mixtape against them and it was funny because i didn't even realize i was banned for a while <laughs> And I went in to go to the channel. I was banned, and I was like, "Wait, well, that's weird." And this is before there was unbanned requests. Why did and so why I reached out? To, why did Cope, out to why him. did Cope ban me from his chat? Yeah, exactly. Why did why did Cope ban me? Yeah, no, Never. but I was like, "Oh, 
And it turns out that he just went on a thing where he banned everybody that used Frank's mixtape. And he eventually unbanned everybody, and I'm back, and we're good. And we've, we've spoken <laughs> okay. since then. Okay. We've laughed that's, about it since that's then. That's wonderful. All right. there, was, there was a period of time where nobody got away with oh it. Oh, my God. So. Okay, I don't remember what the next topic is, but let's hope it's less divisive than this. Old sabotage on hooks and traps. I think we can all agree this was stupid. Um, mm -hmm. It you... was. But oh, you have a hot take? Well, oh, no, the not the is, butt. The thing is, you got 1,000 blood points for sabotaging. So, you know, not everybody wanted to ruin the killer's day, the or the trapper, rather, if you dis, uh, uh, sabotaged his traps. That was an easy way to rank up back in the day. Oh, right, okay. because back in the day, your rank up was based on blood points. I, I remember that. So uh, a bit, bit, bit of an explanation, a bit of context. Back in the day, the trapper's traps, while they were on the ground, could be sabotaged by either the Burke Saboteur or a toolbox. If they were sabotaged, they went away for just a little bit of time, three whole minutes. Three whole minutes. And if you guys remember, the Perk Hangman's trick made it so that the, tra the, the traps came back sooner. <laughs> and yeah, uh, hooks, instead of being sabotaged quickly, they were like, they take longer, but they could be 99. They were like exegates. Survivors in 99, the sabotage on hooks. And then when you walk by, they quickly like did it in your face and the hooks were yep. gone for a long time. Originally in the very, very old uh, times of DVD, the hooks never came back when they were sabotaged. And I su suspect you guys had some experiences with that. Yeah. So there was a meta. There was a meta at one point where the meta was literally to have one person on the survivor team just sabot all the hooks. <laughs> and then all you had left was the basement. And then the counter meta for killer, I don't know if you guys remember machine gun build. Oh. Was um, when you you be pair unrelenting with say the best for last. And in their old iterations, it made it so you could just double tap people with your M1. Like the, the yeah. cooldown, the we weapon wipe was like a Yeah, but, but both perks affected normal hits. So yeah. essentially with both together before they got nerfed, you could do like tam, tam, tam. Like you could you could go machine yeah. gun. That's why it was called. Imagine like imagine eight stacks to say the best for last, but it's mm. twice as fast. Yeah. That's how fast it was with unrelenting and say the best for last. So what you would end up with is like kind of who could piss each other off more because everybody was running sabo and, and saboing all the hooks. And then you'd run agitation, iron grasp, say the best for last unrelenting so you'd have machine gun and then you have something that could hopefully get you to basement so you could actually hook survivors <laughs> once you down there. and once you got them hooked and down in the basement you just it was literally to... impossible to save out of the basement because it would say the best for last yeah and enduring or it's not enduring is it unrelenting unrelenting thank you with with, the, with those two perks combined they literally you would you would hit the guy who went for the unhook and he, he wouldn't even make it to the stairs oh they wouldn't my... even make it to the stairs oh. you just double tap him down and then they were stuck in the basement <sighs> Oh, what's, your, so remember, what's your thoughts on this? I remember spawning in as a survivor when the game just came out fresh. And as soon as I learned how to sabotage hooks, I leveled Jake up immediately. <laughs> and I would have games where the four of us would just fan out like a bunch of birds, just <laughs> flying to the hooks and 99ing them just ready. I hated yeah, that as times. a killer. I Man. hated it. Oh, well. I've always said I've always said about sabotage like to me sabotage is like the survivor equivalent of a killer running four slowdowns because it's like you're 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 preventing the the objective, the objective yeah right because for me yeah. I like to down survivors hook survivors and get back in chase so for me I think sabotage even to this day is like the most frustrating mechanic in the game for me as really? with my place now. I think I yeah. think after all the changes it's in a fairly decent spot the way it is now I don't but... think I don't think it's unhealthy. I just hate it. Yeah, if that makes sense. I feel like yeah, I don't think it's I, I don't I, think it's overpowered because it requires you. skill to pull it off effectively. Yeah. But like when I when I work really hard to get it down mm -hmm. and I'm ready to pop, I'm ready to throw them on my my pain res hook. Yeah. And that thing goes down. It's just like there's a there's a. Red. And, and how do you guys feel about the traps or the trapper being sabotage? You also had slippery meat, which gave you extra chances to escape it. Like it mm -hmm. made you escape traps more frequently. Which is insane, and back be then, back then you didn't have like a fixed RNG. You could be in a trap for two seconds or for two minutes. I once played against a Quentin who stepped on my trap, and I was so far that I was like, you know what, I'm just gonna leave him. And he tried to escape, like you could see his auto, like of him like doing the animation. He tried to escape for like a minute and a half and didn't get out. Like in some like that's like a one in a million chance, and then he DC'd on the spot. Yeah. <laughs> You know, that's the thing. If there's not if there's not a set amount of time, like you, you know, theoretically, you can it's, it's, you can be like trapped a, forever. Yeah, you, you can, can be, be there for the rest of your yeah. life. <laughs> you know, we'll never, we'll never that escape. was the one. 
I was the one breaking the traps. That's all. Jesus, yeah. that I if I ever were. saw my traps broken as a trapper, I like I, I put you on my blacklist. You know, it's like mm -mm, yeah. you're, I got you're, you're dead to me. <laughs> I got slapped on the hook for it. <laughs> Deserved. Next up, the old Maurice and the whole Maurice spam thing. So back in the day, before you actually moored a survivor, the animation began and you could cancel it half halfway through. You, you you didn't need to like commit to it. So you could do the first animation. So for example, with Ghostface, you could start the animation of mooring to like sit on the survivor and then repeatedly do it. And I know of at least one streamer that might have gone in a bit of trouble for doing that and might have been yeah. uh might have been uh slightly under fire for doing that. But I'm sure it wasn't the only person. So that's one thing you could do with Morris. But what else did the old Morris do, uh, Running Man? Uh, basically, with the old Mori, the first time you down somebody, you could just kill them and take them out of the game. Oh, that's like, the very, very, that's a very, yeah. very old. The oh original, the original Mori, you didn't have to hook anybody. Uh, you just down them, they're dead. Bye. <laughs> so you, you, you have some clips on YouTube where a Billy loads into the game, uses the saw, hits someone, and they just Mori them? <laughs> yeah. I used to do that. I, I have I've upset I upset people a lot. I had one other streamer call me the worst thing in the DVD community by far oh. because I did that to them. I, I downed them down them and moored them with a spirit in like under 30 seconds in a match. I was I was prayer beat spirit. I zoned in. I went. I whacked them. I I, I downed them and I killed them. Oh so my sad. god! All right. So yeah. after after a little bit of time, Morris were reworked to not be as disgusting, but they were still extremely powerful and anytime you went against a sweaty killer that was like like that had it for you remember they could switch so someone could be playing a clown for their for their daily and then they see a streamer in their lobby or someone that they dislike they could switch to a nurse with a mori right and what did the next moris do cob um oh boy so our current moris are on death hook but Prior to that, I believe you had to hook the survivor once and then you could moor them. Was that it? Mm -hmm. Yep. And really quickly, I'd like to touch on one thing that wasn't really brought up, the Mori spam. Oh. Not only was it just the animation itself, but you delayed the bleed out for the survivor as well. Oh. So if you if you were like Leatherface and you just kept bonking them on the head over and over, which was fun, by the way. <laughs> yeah. Unfortunately, <laughs> you did delay their bleed out. And for me, it was longer than, I believe the bleed out is four minutes. Yeah. Around there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, much longer than that. So you could maybe expand it to God knows what. That's crazy. Wow. So essentially, instead of, like, think about it this way, right? How do survivors stay alive today? They have reassurance and kinship to stay up longer on the hook. They have deliverance to unhook themselves. They have decisive strike, off the record, adrenaline, all these things. Uh, but back in the day, they only had decisive. And decisive, after a certain change, we'll talk about it, only work after the hook when you got picked up. So basically, with this one Mori, with one offering, you would counter all the protection survivors ever had. Once they came off the hook, bar time was not base kit, so you could immediately hit them sometimes. Um, and then immediately Mori them. Completely counter DS, completely counter any other perk, dead. Instead of three hooks, just one hook and one down, bam, that guy's dead. And you yeah. could do that four times. Well, another thing worth mentioning too. Do you remember original Dying Light? Oh, yikes. so the original oh, Dying oh, Light. I know, I know where this is going. Oh, to. Yeah, if, yeah. The, if the obsession was killed, you'd get like a, a base slowdown. It was like twenty percent. Twenty, like thirty-three. I think it was thirty-three percent. So okay, if, so yeah. yeah, if you killed the if you killed the obsession, the entire game slowed down. Everything heals, oh. gens, any action slowed down by thirty-three percent. So, and yeah. so what you it was it was, it was basically would... like like current pentimento pretty much yeah pentimento except it triggered when you killed the obsession and with a more you could kill them in one minute so three survivors yeah. left versus one and they had to have an unavoidable dying light which was a pentimento also right. uh i didn't talk about this and we didn't write it down in our list but how do you guys love the fact that for many many years in dead by daylight if a survivor crashed during the loading you would load up into a 3v1. Because that was oh, yeah. fucking Miserable. awful. That was terrible. As Miserable, a killer, yeah. as a killer I, even, I, I sometimes loaded into a 1v2 or a 1v1. It. I absolutely hate 3v1s. I think they're boring. They're not the way the game should be played. That's why you queue up yeah. as four players versus one player. And it, 
it puts me to sleep. I hate it. it you know, you know Agreed. how you you know how you feel when uh, your teammates go down and they kill themselves with hook at the start. It was like that, but from the very beginning of the match, so you didn't even get to experience like three seconds of a normal match. It was yeah, absolutely but, but terrible. Honestly, if you if you lost the survivor, they take one of the gens off. So you only had to do four gens. So it's even, <laughs> right, it's really right. fair. Yeah, that's true. That's Here's true. Fair. Yeah. All right. Next up, guys, the older BMPs, the brand new parts, which is that one pink add-on mm. from Tooloxes. Let's talk about the about two of them. Uh, running man, you want to explain the very, very old ones? The very original BMP. Literally, you just activated it and it finished the gen from zero. So if there's a dead gen hadn't even started yet, you walk up to it, you activate it. That gen is now 100. percent 20 percent of the objective is now done instantly. And you could bring. I mean, you could bring. You could bring up to four. four. So there were matches I, I zoned into matches back then where four gens popped in the first 30 seconds. <laughs> and you're just like, okay, well, I guess this one's over. I could do you one even better. Because there were no ways to regress the generators back then, in other words, kicking a generator. It didn't exist. Or nope. So what I did really often is I would find the generator closest to an exit gate, keep my brand new part, pop it at the very end, and just leave. Oh my lord. Left everybody. Jesus. Beautiful. Um, well, um, after that, brand new parts got a bit of a nerf. All right. Very significant nerf. And instead of doing gens immediately in like zero seconds, now they did a gen um, as long as you hit skill checks. And basically it took you 20 seconds. That's the brand new part that I played against quite a bit when I started playing and for a few while, for a few months afterward. Uh, I, I, was that even worse? Because at least it made you have like a bit of hope. Because I remember seeing that. And I, I guess that if the gens go immediately, it's almost like you're playing against cheaters. So you just kind of like accept that there's nothing you could do. But the old brand new parts where it was gens in 20 seconds, that was disgusting. Yeah. That was it really, awful. It was. It really was. It's kind of a pick your poison kind of moment, really. Just yeah. misery. The other add-ons that survivors had for their medkits, by the way, allowed them to heal a health state immediately on press. That's the purple. And heal two health states immediately on press. That's the pink one. So you could use it on someone on the ground, and they would immediately spring back to full health. Yeah, I got my first ever 5-gen run. Somebody left me a medkit with a styptic in a loop. <laughs> And I was being chased, and I literally picked it up, insta healed myself, and kept and kept running. Ooh, one thing that happened to me day. once, I, I'm sure you guys have seen this, is I hit a survivor that was injured, and they popped a insta heal. That's why they were called insta heals, and it was a syringe. And I hit them, but they heal at the same time. So I hit them when injured, and instead of they went down, but then they heal back to full. I did that. Oh yeah, my! I, used to, oh, I remember dude. that used to be. A there was like a tech for that. Like yeah. people did that all the time. Yeah, people had that that timing all the time. It was like, well, it was like the 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 mid dead hard. Yeah, yeah, like it was like time yeah. it just right. You'd go down and immediately be back <laughs> oh up and running again. Oh my god, that's so ridiculous! Yeah. All right, is there any other item that you guys miss? Like the flashlights back in the day that blinded you for God knows how long? Like any other item you guys miss? There was that one, there's that one meta Kobe probably remember. Um, when flashlights like you you just had to aim in the general direction and it was like an automatic flashlight save. Is this the blind? You had to blind them. It didn't matter when you blinded them. I, I was there, but department. for that, by the way. Yeah. Yeah, there was yes, there was there was a patch that. where where they decided that if you blinded the killer at any point, it would be an automatic tight, flashy yeah. save. Like you could just yep, aim yeah. it for two seconds and just leave like which is yep. similar to what we have now, which is a bit more forgiven, but you still need to time it a bit. Before, yeah. you didn't even have to. And before, the pickup animation was extremely long. It was very long. Picking up was like... Uh, uh, I remember... Uh, um, light... Not Lightborn. What, what was it? What was it? Something was tested against the flashlight saves, and it was still very easy to blind them. Was it Lightborn? Uh, yeah, with, light, with Lightborn, the flashlights took twice as long to blind you, but you could still do it. Because if yeah, you didn't need the timing, insane. you know. So <laughs> that was a bit silly. Uh, uh, I remember when there was an update, uh, by the way, where you're... I, this is the dumbest thing about flashlights. I'm going to talk about it before we move on. Basically, people figured out that if they changed their resolution so that their camera was very narrow... 
they could not be blinded from their sides. It would be like wearing like one of those shoe, one of those horse uh, blinders, you know, that you don't oh, see around wow. you. So people people made macros so they could pick up, and if they heard someone coming with a flashy save, they could press a button, turn their game into like super stretch resolution, and you couldn't be blinded from the sides, which is just the stupidest. The stupidest thing I've ever seen in my life in this game. But is it as stupid as the older Hex ruins both of them? Okay, well, controversial opinion here, but I if, if, think... if, Okay, okay, okay. Are you going to say that the old ruin today wouldn't be even that bad? Yeah. I mean, having to hit great skill checks to keep the gen pumping, mm -hmm. not that bad. It's a Hex totem. Because mm -hmm. right. the original, the original ruin, the original ruin couldn't be cleansed, right? It was just like it was just a permanent. No, no, it came, it came as a hex. That, I think that was Noid. You're always? thinking, okay. yeah, I think so. Okay, I thought that the original ruin as well couldn't make cleanse, but um, I believe you. But yeah, I think that I don't know. Even back then, even back when it was like a, I didn't run it because I was so frustrated with the concept of like losing your ruin in the first thirty seconds to the minute of the match, and then you're in a three three per game. Mm -hmm. Like, I mean a hex totem. Okay, cleanse. okay, but if you didn't run There's it counterplay, I mean, it's, it's like a perfect perk. It's got counterplay, it can be cleansed. Like it's it's but what grades, but, but what did you what did you run instead? There was no other slowdown perks. There was nothing else. Pop. Cope and I ran pop. Oh, I did run everyone. pop goes the weasel we were, for a while when it was we were the original you know, pop guys. Wow. When it was like bad to a lot of people back then. Hex uh, Ruin, by the way, I completely agree with Running Man. The skill checks felt very rewarding to even hit as a survivor. Like, you're actually just sitting through it mm -hmm. and you're working through it. It felt pretty good. So what, yeah. would what would happen if this run existed right now is that good survivors wouldn't mind it too much and people that play on PC that can hit skill checks wouldn't mind it too much. But basically for people that are newer or that struggle with skill checks, if you don't hit your grades, the gen slow down and lost a bit of progress. And what happens is that if you had three people on a gen and one or two of them wasn't consistent, three people on a gen would have the gen actually go back and regress. It's like it was being hit by multiple like jolts, you know. So it made beginners and slightly, you know, uh, the 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 stronger, the more struggling survivors, very very powerless. We forgot one little thing. What gen tapping. Oh, come on. Yeah, okay. So you could tap the gens to avoid getting any skill check whatsoever. But that took, like, that took, like, like, <laughs> how much? <laughs> like, a hundred? It was lower, but it was hilarious to see just a group of people just... Yeah, people would do that. People would do gens, yeah. and it would take, like, two people, like, a hundred seconds, like, a minute and a half to do one gen, two people, just because they were, like... But even that was better than what some of the survivors did, which was like run around the entire map looking for totems and never finding them. And that yeah. was like a side quest, like a GTA side quest, and they just never actually found it. So that Ruin wasn't as powerful as you might think, but it was a bit of a noob stumper. But then Ruin got nerfed, and people were like, oh, the game will die, and oh, we need a Ruin, it was the yeah, only thing, Keep oh, this game is gonna die, and guess what, the new Ruin was even better. And it was so strong, and it was so good, and it was uh, a perk that essentially made any gen that lets um, that not doesn't get touched begins to regress at two hundred percent speed, which is basically half the time a survivor uh, repairs it in. So if one survivor works on a gen for five seconds and then you interrupt them in ten seconds, that gen goes back to nothing, and it's stacked with surge, aka okay, jolt, and then undying came out, and we'll talk about that. Did you yourself, really quick, did you like old Hex or Knots? The, the one for the skill checks? Yes. Um, as a survivor, I think it was a bit challenging to hit it. It was like, ooh, it feels good, feels nice. And I also liked that you could run Detective's Hunch or a map to find it and kind of like outplay it. That was kind of cool. Uh, I, 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 I didn't super hate it, but I understood that it, it just hit a certain kind of survivors really, really hard. Like, you could see three survivors on a gen, and the gen goes backwards, and that's just... It wasn't healthy, so, yeah, it had to go. So I was supportive of the idea of Ruin getting nerfed, and then it got buffed, and it was hilarious. Because the new Ruin was so good that everybody run it. And do you guys want me to, like, talk about all, all the other supportive perks that were around it? 
So well, I mean, I just I do think it's worth mentioning Ruin Undying, which was hilarious because you'd have basically five Ruin totems a match. Right. But like, they couldn't just cleanse it. If they tried to cleanse it, it would just keep bouncing around. Right. So the way Undying worked, um, someone made a tree to visualize this. If you cleanse Undying, it was gone, and then you cleanse Ruin and two totems, kind of like now. But if you cleanse Ruin, it reappeared elsewhere. And then if you cleanse Ruin again, it reappeared again. So you could do five totems to get rid of one single Ruin. And every time you want a totem, the killer saw your aura. So they could interrupt you just for one second if they needed to. And it was awful. It was terrible. And not only that, uh, back then, Tinkerer got buffed and it showed, it showed you the aura of a gen that it was getting done, right? And it warned you and gave you stealth and it worked multiple times. So you, whenever a gen got 70%, you could teleport to it as Freddy and make the gens even slower with your Freddy add-ons uh, and then chase them off. Gen regresses. They do it again. You get another Tinkerer and it was like this ongoing back and forth and it was extremely boring. People hated it. I'll do you one further than that. I think it was really unhealthy to the point that it would give you kind of like a pat on the back saying, it's okay. If you lost Hex Ruin, you have it to be cleansed potentially two more times. It's fine. There were people that and defended that. Just... There were people that said, oh no, survivors need side objectives. It's a good thing that they need to do two to five totems, depending on their luck, to, to, to begin to even do gen sometimes. It was crazy to me. Oh, should we move on, or do you have any final considerations about Ruin? No, I'm ready to... I'm ready to put it in the past. <laughs> and let it be Ruin. <laughs> All right, talking about Ruin, uh, a killer that used to spark really, really well was the Nightmare. Uh, at, it's at his strongest, but the Nightmare went through several phases. Now, the summary of it is that he came out and he was very overwhelming for beginners, so they nerfed it, and then he was extremely underwhelming for a long time, so eventually they reworked him, but then he was extremely overwhelming, so they nerfed it, and then he was still overwhelming years later, and they nerfed him further. So, like, he's been riding the waves. What do you guys think about the very old original Freddy? I didn't play that much when he came out. The original iteration of Freddy was like the Slug King, right, Running Man, I believe? He was like the killer yeah. that everybody kind of went to. And if you, correct me if I'm wrong, if you, like, went far, further enough away from the survivors, you could see their aura on the ground. Yeah. I believe it was. Yeah, you got, you got built-in Deerstalker. If you slugged him and you were and, and they were in the dream world, right? So he had he had like some things about him that were strong, but then some things about him that were so weak. Because you had like the seven second transition, you had to put the survivor into sleep mode and into, into the dream state, right? Yeah, think think so, of like think of like Sadako right now, where she can't hit you when she's the manifested, but she needs to the manifest for seven seconds, kind of yeah. like that. Like she needs to be on top of you for seven seconds before she can hit you. And yeah. that was very frustrating for new players, but somehow still well, OP. You couldn't you couldn't interact with anyone too. So like, if they were cleansing a totem, you had to wait seven seconds before you could stop it. If they and were opening an exit gate, you had to wait seven seconds before you could stop it. Didn't you have to aim at them with a mouse? Yeah, too, I to believe? put them down. Yep. To put yeah. them into sleep. You had to hit them. You had to hit them. And then, so I think we talked about this a little bit beforehand, but like, there was all kinds of. So when you with the perk adrenaline. Adrenaline would give you a health state and would also wake you up from Freddy's sleep, from his dream state, right? Yeah. So survivors would literally run adrenaline when Freddy was in the meta and you'd be chasing somebody injured and then they'd go back to being awake and... You couldn't, hit, you couldn't hit them. Like, not only they heal, you couldn't hit them. So you had to retransition them back to sleep before you could even touch them again, oh which was God. really bad. And then remember, there was no end game collapse. So survivors would like go to the exit gate and then you'd have, and they wouldn't, they wouldn't leave. They wouldn't run out. <laughs> so you, you'd like, you'd have to put them into the sleep and then hit them once. And, and then, then if they woke back. up, they could yeah. wait. Everyone at the time run self-care because it was a really yeah. good perk. And everyone used to, to get skill checks and miss them and wake up. So they could keep yeah. waking up and just be basically untouchable for a very long time. Yeah, that was rough. But on the flip side, he had a bunch of when he got when he got changed, he got a bunch of add-ons in minutes so he could make the gens be the slowest they can possibly. Yeah, when game. he got rework, he got I believe three different add-ons that made it so that for every survivor asleep or every sleep survivor got four, nine, whatever percentage, you could make the gens only about fifteen percent slower with all his add-ons for this. Now, fifteen percent doesn't seem like a lot, 
But back in the day, you could play, you compare this with Thana, which was like 5 and 5, so another 10 or 15%. And then you could have Ruin. And then on top of Ruin, you could use Pop. So that when your Ruin was gone, you could use that. Or Ruin Undying, as we discussed. So basically, you had gens that took like 100 seconds to do, that constantly progress on their own, that constantly warned the killer, and he could teleport to you at any given time. And then, oh, oh, and we didn't even talk about this, but at his best, Freddy um, completely ignored Borrow Time. Borrow Time was a protection perk that every so hour had to run because it wasn't basic. Uh, so when you got unhooked, you were vulnerable. But Freddy, because you are not within his stereo radius, if you're asleep, you, your bleed out timer from the mending go went down. So Freddy, uh, depending, uh, depending on, on what would happen, if the survivor that unhooked was asleep, bar time didn't work. So you could just hit the survivor immediately. And that was horrible. And then you could moy them, for example. And if, the, if this didn't happen, you could hit the survivor and they would bleed out in like 15 seconds. Uh, and they were not, there was nothing they could do. They would just bleed out. So just imagine how annoying this was. And Freddy, for some time, was the most popular killer that I saw in my public games. Don't know about you guys. And the most, uh, like... Easily. Yeah. And he was, like, at his best, Freddy was easily, like, top five or top four uh, best killers in the game. And that was Agreed. crazy. And now he's never far from the bottom four. <laughs> so go figure. Yeah. What, what happened since? Uh, they nerfed all of this. Uh, no longer gets... His adults were reworked. Now they're all trash, pretty much. Um, he doesn't get any particular help with uh, with. He cannot cheese insta downs after hook. In fact, survivors now got a clock, so they could wake up, and now they have ninety seconds of staying awake if they use a clock, which wasn't a thing before. Uh, obviously, a bunch of other changes. Uh, survivors are also smarter. You know, all of these things have made him into a killer that's not terrible, but it's also super mediocre. Do you guys think he's in a right spot or? I mean, um, he's fine. He's lower tier, probably, but it's one of those things, right? Like, it's just, it, he's just yo-yoed back and forth. How do you like even the change him? Best. Like, yeah, I mean, I guess you could give him like little buffs, but at this point, like, yeah. you know, he's he's got like less snares. He's got no slowdowns on his add-ons anymore. I don't know. He's I'll, just I'll, he's just definition of a mid-tier killer. I think I'll give you the really dull response. I'm totally fine with M1 killers. I do love them. Like. They're not going to be amazing sometimes. We all know that. And sometimes you just want to kind of, you know, just go with that vibe. And Freddy's that vibe sometimes for me personally. Fair enough. But yes, he is weak. Next up, we talk about the issues that came from this game being P2P, peer to peer. Uh, the existence of lag switches and also the exploits in particular. Do you guys remember the on screen messages? Could you tell me about that? Because I remember it a bit, but I also don't have a lot of experiences with it. I didn't see it too commonly. I do remember it, but it's, I didn't see the, it too the, commonly. The, the first time it happened to me, I was playing on Haddonfield, right? And I am streaming to God knows how many people. And I get a notification on screen. You know when you get invited by your friends to a Survivor fans? And it's like, oh, Running Man or Cope has invited you to their party. That thing showed up mid-game, and it said, DBD suck, DBD devs suck, mm -mm -mm, has invited you to their game. And then I would get more invites, and the, the text would be even more and more rude. And I also heard that some people, when they went on, oh, this is another thing that I bet happened to you. When you clicked on the profile of a cheater, they made it redirect to other people's profiles. So I got I a, lot that, of, yeah. a lot of messages and DMs being like, Odds, I caught you cheating. Look at this. Look at the footage. It's it's you. It's you. I clicked on the profile and it was you. This is your Steam account and you did this. And I hope that you're happy. Or, you know, oh my god, you got hacked because, look, your account is doing this. And that was just them redirecting you. So how do you guys feel about all of that? The messages themselves never happened to me because I typically launch Steam offline and I have pretty private settings for Steam. I really believe that's what kept me, I guess, safe from them. So I never saw that other than once, and it was just some, like, joke thing. And that was it. Did it ever happen to you, yeah. Running Man? It did, yeah. I was always public. And, I mean, I, I don't think I was as prominent back then when that was happening. So, like, people didn't – I didn't have as much attention. But I definitely remember having people reach out to me about 
I saw you hacking in a game. I'm like, yeah, that's not my profile. That wasn't me. I mean, I live stream when I play. And I definitely remember getting the spam invites. I don't remember them being any like malicious messages in them, but I just remember them like spam inviting while I'm trying to play, which was really distracting. So mm -hmm. I had to end stream a couple of times because of that. I remember. Uh, I also but. saw some screenshots uh, around the, the internet of people that would try to report cheaters. And when they clicked on the report option, they would get their entire skin plastered with like racial slurs and other colorful messages. I oh, did wow. see that stuff. You did see that? That never happened to I, me, but it scared me. And every time I reported someone, I hid my screen because I was terrified of like a bunch of like horrible things showing up on screen without any control. Yeah. So what what, what was it like? Go. Pretty nasty stuff. Never happened to me also, but I saw it in other channels, you know, like uh, more prominent channels, people are just having the messages, really bad messages, and they would click on the profiles. And like you said, if they didn't hide, then, you know, something bad could show up on the Jesus. screen. Um, lag switching, by the way. Um, I used to dread lag going switch. into a game. And if I saw someone with no either, I was like, wait a minute. What's going on here? People with no either would make it so that when you try to pick them up, your game would freeze. And with yeah. no either, they could pick themselves up. So anytime I saw a no either, I was like, ah, hold up. And it was like 90% 90 of the time, it was lag switchers. That every time you started chasing them, they would like turn it up. And because it was pure to peer, like you, you would just never, you would never see it. The most fun thing I saw is a streamer that figured out a way to try to like hit survivors on their actual location. So I remember seeing someone that I don't know how, but they figured out that, oh, oh, okay, uh, I need to, when I see them disappear, I'm going to wait and then I'm going to hit behind me and then I'm going to hit them. And it was really, really funny. But for the most part, a major nuisance. Did you guys experience any other like exploits related to the old netcode and stuff? I can give you the other side of the coin. Yeah. I as a survivor would, for example, see the escape hatch at the very end and I'm like, oh, Here's my hatch. Let me go get my points. Nope, my game stops for a second, and then I'm on the ground, and I'm... <laughs> oh, <laughs> right! Yeah, yeah, that was a thing! Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Killer, killer basically froze the game down you in, in their screen, and then, bam! It just happened all at yep. once. Wow, that was awful. Yeah, I had a Bubba do the same thing. Like, we were we were getting ready to leave. We were all at the exit gates, and then... <laughs> oh, I remember that. Like, that happened to me, We were going to try to run out, and it's, like, not happening, and then all of a sudden, like, the next thing I know, we're all on a hook. <laughs> yeah, and, and no, that would like the, the the sad part is that some people would have this as a as a plan B. So if they lost, they would trigger it to like try to win back. <laughs> oh, yeah. that's so pathetic! All right, moving that's on so to the weird. next topic. If you guys are keen, uh, pallet vacuums and the time where pallets didn't stun. Could you guys? Because when I started playing, pallet vacuums were a thing. And it was so unbelievably lame. Could you explain how that whole thing worked? Uh, Running Man, maybe? Imagine if every time a survivor was about to throw a pallet, they got a free dead heart. And that's yes. really what it was. Yeah. It would literally just... Like the win, old dead heart the, that, that propelled you yeah. forward. Mm -hmm. When the survivor was in the activation range of throwing a pallet, once you activated throwing the pallet, you would suck into the pallet and then throw the pallet. So yeah, like, so, so the from, survivor, the, from, the, the, from the closer the side of you, that. yeah, from your closer side... As soon as they reach the pallet to like drop it from the same side, they would just like teleport to the end of the pallet. Yeah. You you didn't have this animate you didn't have this animation of dropping the pallet from the same side. You just always teleported to the other side, and that made yeah. every little loop in the game essentially unplayable uh, without the pallet being broken. Because even if the survivor was close to the pallet, they would just immediately teleport ahead, just like like the flash. Yeah. How do you guys feel yeah. about that? <laughs> I actually didn't like that at all, and I acknowledge that it was a thing. Believe it if you want. I went as far as to wait until I got to the correct side, and then I threw it. And then people would always ask, why aren't you using the pallet vacuum? I'm like, it's kind of lame. Oh, wow. I don't want to. Honorable survivor. One thing that I found really what? annoying is that back then, self-care healed you in like 12 seconds. So what happened was that you would chase a survivor, uh, mangled... Uh, and, and hemorrhoids didn't exist like they do before. So you couldn't interrupt heals like that. So you would chase them. They would self-care mid-chase. They would make it to a pallet. Immediately teleport to the other side. Start healing again. You break the pallet. They go to the next one. They do the same. And by the time you broke two pallets, they were already full health. And this was self-care. It couldn't, like, you, you couldn't, like, they couldn't run out of it. It wasn't like a medkit that Infinite. ran out. Yeah. Infinite Forever. resets. Oh, dear. 
uh, and then we had a time, uh, and I played during this, where pallets failed to stun killers. I remember I, once I hit a survivor that dropped the pallet on me, and it, it's like I was cheating. What happened? Do you guys remember that vividly? I have a question for the both of you, because with the no stun bug, you as a killer did not get stunned by the pallet, and you just bounced off of it like you know you had butter on yourself or something. It was really weird. I never got that when I played killer. Did you it, guys ever? It happened at random intervals. Like it, it was very, very strange. That it, never happened for me when I played killer, but always when I played survivor. Jesus, maybe it was a connection thing where if your ping was big enough, it started to happen. Absolutely no idea. You guys have anything else to add to this or should we move to the next one? All right, next. And this I think is a spicy one. The old decisive strike. And there were two old ones. The very first one, who wants to have a go at explaining it? Go for it, Cope. This is okay, you. So you were running it. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot. The old decisive strike was you can use it immediately. You get down. Let's say the game just started. You get down. Okay, you have decisive strike and you can use it. And correct me if I'm wrong, if you didn't use it, you had it later in the game to use, I believe. Maybe. I don't think you could choose not to. I think if you lost it, you just lost it. The thing is, okay. if you were the obsession, you used it right away. And if you weren't the obsession, it you had to wiggle for like a third of the progress. Like, I don't know, like maybe five was. or six seconds. So yeah, essentially, um, so, uh, killers for years be uh, had this habit of never chasing the obsession first. Because if you chase the obsession... First of all, obsessions didn't always exist. There wasn't always one obsession, right? Now there's always one obsession. Nope. So if you saw an obsession, that meant that the survivors had obsession perks. If they had obsession perks, they had decisive. And if you picked up the obsession, they could use decisive on the first down, like immediately. You pick them up, they hit you, and now it takes you another 30 seconds on to down them, and it's like a complete fr free second chance escape, and then three gens get done. And that I will argue against what you just said. Not necessarily having decisive, they could have had object of obsession. Oh yeah, no, well, you would know that. You would know that. For example, as a trapper, when I loaded into a game, before I set down any traps, I looked in the distance to see if someone had object. Object of obsession was a perk that allowed survivors to see you at any given time from a distance, and it destroyed the trapper, and it also destroyed killers that had no terror radius like Ghostface. Undetectable didn't exist back then, so basically with this killers, uh, when Ghostface came out, for a week, everyone ran Objectical Obsession, and if you used Stealth, they would see you through a wall. Constantly. Nothing you could do. You would see them too, but, I mean, what does it matter? So they had walk hacks on you. It was awful. Awful, awful, awful. But the thing is, even if you picked up non-obsessions, what would happen is that someone would go and take a hit for them, and it would be like flip-flop on steroids. Like, it would be like, after five seconds of caring, if you didn't manage to hook, they would escape. And this would be active even in the end game. Which There's is one amazing thing that I remembered while looking at Running Man's face. I'm not even kidding. That's how it <laughs> reminded me. There was a way to deal with decisive strike, right? Was it dribbling them up? Dribbling. Dribbling. Juggling, yeah, yeah, juggling. So you want to explain, you you explain that? So basically, well, initially, you didn't have a skill check for a decisive strike. You just activated and you got oh. away. But then they added the skill check. Okay. And so, but what they... what They, they messed up. They, what happened, when you picked up the survivor... It took a second for the skill check to trigger so you could like walk and then it would trigger and then do the skill check. So what you do is you pick them up and you walk a few feet and then you drop them. It's it's like it's like it's like carrying really heavy them. grocery uh bags. You like pick them for a yeah, second and then drop yeah. them. Pick them for a second and then drop them. And then you would just you would just juggle them all the way to the hook and they would never get their skill checks so they could never hit their decisive strike. But, but you know the funniest part is that you didn't know if they had decisive or not. So if you don't the no. obsession, you would do this stupid ritual that would waste like 8 or 10 or 15 seconds just so that you don't get decisive and they might it's not okay. even have it. So that was really, really fun. Now, awesome. uh, this was eventually nerfed, arguably, into the more fair anti-tunneling decisive. So the new anti-tunneling decisive, which is close to what we have now, Whenever you got unhooked, for the next 60 seconds, if the, if the killer grabbed you, you stun them for 5 seconds. Initially, and during, cut this time, but then they made it not, so it was 5 seconds, no matter what. 5 whole seconds. And survivors would sometimes be a bit cheeky, they would go into a locker, 
and you wouldn't be able to do anything. They would do a slow vault in front of you to force you into grab them and do that kind of stuff. And the thing is, it didn't go away if you did conspicuous actions. So what was incredibly frustrating about this perk is that a survivor would be unhooked, they would do a gen, they would do a gen for like 30 seconds, then you would come back, and if you down them and you grab them, you ate a decisive. Even though they were doing objectives in your face. And it worked in the end game as well. So you could have you could grab a survivor in the exit gates and then they could hit you with the decisive and get out. And with 60 seconds, it was pretty much guaranteed that they would do this. Um, yeah. And you could also pair it with Unbreakable. So if the killer left you on the ground, you could just pick yourself up. And this the decisive unbreakable combo was like like ubiquitous. It was everywhere for I don't know how many years. So yeah, how do you guys feel about this second more fair decisive? I always ran it. It was fun. I, I, like, being, I, I like being invincible. I would, like, I, would, uh, I would get chased. I'd just jump into a locker and be like, all right, bud, pull me. Because <laughs> even if they don't. Did the wait, wait, wait. wait. Do, you ever, do you ever pull it off where you go into a locker and you don't have the decisive and the killer just oh, yeah. waits a minute yeah. in front of you? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's like it's just as good as going on a nice long run. I don't have to use any pallets, you know, and just kill <laughs> some time. Cool. Yeah, it's like you have five perks now. Great. Awesome. Nine, nine that's, games. Now. That's so funny. You guys have anything else to add to this? We can move along. Next up is the old Noid. Now, there's an old, old Noid. So uh, if you guys want to enlighten me, I don't think I ever saw the old, old one. Sure. So the oldest version of Noid, I hope I'm remembering this correctly. I believe it reduced your successful attack on a survivor by like a very small number. Really? And Noed was, yeah, um, I believe so. Noed was also permanent and was not a hex totem back but then. You, but did you, did you get the insta down? Yes. And it was not a hex. That's what I remember hearing about. So basically you had infinite faster recovery and infinite insta down in the end game, no matter what. Yeah, yeah. And I'll tell you something even worse. The exit gates were not that far from far from each other back then at all. Oh, that's I don't disgusting. Know why, but oh, Jesus. Easy, well, I, easy or, 4K sometimes. I remember they changed it to where it wasn't a hex totem yet, but they made it so that it had like a set period of time. It was like two minutes. Two or minutes. Something like that. Yeah. And then and then hope also had two minutes. And I remember for a while the meta for survivor was like running hope, so you had like a no ed timer. Yeah. So you could like you would like know if they had no ed, like okay, well, as soon as hope runs out, I can go for the save. Mm -hmm. I remember that being a thing for a while. Wow. Jeez. And then they changed it into being a hex, but yeah. but the hex did not reveal itself to survivors. And essentially what happened is that it would trigger. The survivors have no idea where it is. If they had done, unless they had done five totems, it was guaranteed to be somewhere tricky, and sometimes it could be next to the person on the hook, which is kind of what happens now as well. So, yeah, no, it was very, very popular. Also, you didn't have reassurance, you didn't have deliverance. For many years, you didn't have any of these second chance or, or hook extending perks. So, essentially, if you had multiple people on the hook, you just had to give up. And it was a very yeah. annoying perk. And also, sometimes you played against a killer that wasn't doing so well, and you were like, this guy's going to have no it. If he's at this yep. rank or this MMR or whatever, you're going to be like, this guy's going to have no it. And sure enough, pop the gen, no it. Was it that I bad? Are we, are we like remembering it with exaggerated vibes or what's going on? I think the best version for me personally was... Prior to the aura being shown, I didn't mind that. I like Noed as a, I, I like perks that spice the game up. Noed, your teammates are being insta down all of a sudden. Now you have an extra objective to do. Find Noed and help them if you wish. Mm -hmm. Oh, I love the idea that sometimes people were like, "Oh, just go cleanse Noed. What's the big deal?" And then you're hooked right next to it, and it's literally yeah. impossible. Oh, I hate that. That's still a problem to this day. Maybe Noed should have two totems. I don't know how you guys feel, feel about like it. I feel like we should ask the Noed salesman in this call right now. Yeah, Noed's like my favorite perk, so okay, I'm okay. biased here. I'm biased here, but I don't know. The current version is kind of, it's kind of lame. I think it's too easy to cleanse now. Like I thought it was more exciting. I agree with what Cope said. The one right before this current one was my favorite, where it was all RNG based. It's an RNG based game, right? So it's RNG based. Like either I get a good Noed spawn or I don't. 
I, I, get value I right benefited now. fully. I benefited fully. I did so many win streaks with that. I remember when we had No Way Out at its strongest, 60 seconds, and Know It at its strongest, out of not being shown. And Subabers didn't have reassurance or, or kinship was basically unusable. Like, mm -hmm. there were situations in the, in the mid game where I would be like, okay, now that I know that they need 80 seconds to open a gate and that I have Know It, there is zero chance that they can win this. So I'm just going to camp. So I could start camping in the middle game. And they, if they if they uh, if they exchange, no way out get stronger. If they don't exchange, they die. They die to no no way out. It was so good and so reliable. I think a little bit too good. So I do disagree a bit, but I understand your point that it was kind of exciting. Yeah. It was like, ooh, we're well, gonna... I'm I'm also I'm also saying what I prefer, but I'm not like lobbying yeah, for it to okay. come back. Fair like, I'm, Fair I'm a, I run yeah. no it still. No, it's pretty weak now, but I think that's fine. Mm -hmm. like, it doesn't bother me. It's that's it's totally fair. Work anyways, right? So next up, the moonlight offerings. I did recall seeing them these a bit, but I don't think I played much during their heyday. So tell us what were the moonlight offerings? The moonlight offerings were either. The darkest moonlight, a dim moonlight, a bright moonlight, or the brightest moon. And mm. it does exactly what it sounds like. The darkest moon would make the maps like super dark, like McMillan. You but, could barely see anything. Back then, by the way, farm was also nighttime. So every map was like nighttime, pretty much. Yeah. So, and they were like, yeah. So this is something that Subabras or Killer wanted to use. Was it both? What was it? It was it was really a survivor thing. You could just hide in a corner and you would not even be seen. More I mean, you can you can see it a little bit in the picture that that I found for this. You see that the bottom half of it is like completely dark. And back then, the game was really dark, and a lot of no joke. a lot of characters were like completely invisible. This would be paired with um, the thick mist back then, and oh, yeah. it would be a nightmare for anyone to find you. It was similar to waking up at like 2 a.m. to try to get some water. You just couldn't see anything. With <laughs> I remember light. the Prestige yeah. 3 uh, characters that were like, like, like someone would be like, oh, just watch the footage. And I would watch the footage and it would be like one of those, uh, one of those videos of like octopus that like hide in the bottom of the ocean. And they are completely like they have like a ghillie suit. They are completely indistinguishable from the background. It's in, it was insane. And back then, yeah. Iron Will and all these perks made you completely silent as well. So that was really, really strong. Do you guys remember yeah. this fondly or was it super annoying? Because I don't remember it much. It was annoying. <laughs> Obviously, it was annoying. Yeah, you just go into could, a match. and Could, could you use wearing... the brightest moonlight as a killer to counter it? How did it work? Yeah, I feel like it wasn't it. Wasn't it? Cope, remind me or help me out here. But if I remember correctly they both would apply and so like if you have used the brightest and they use like a middle dark offering then you would you would like win and you'd get more bright than dark yep. and if you use like if you went back to back like brightest and darkest it would like it would cancel each other out and yep. it would just be like normal lighting but they could use and two so of them it, it was yeah it was like a it was like a tug of war of like, <laughs> well, who's gonna get who's gonna get their lighting this match and so it was really dumb they ended up getting rid of these offerings by the way because it had to do with the performance of the game they couldn't keep up with like making their maps um reflect from the moonlights anymore right yeah, yeah. it was, it was i still a have switch. moonlight offerings on my survivors though like so they're like they're like vaulted but i still have them on claudette and Lori. wow moonlight offerings that are just like disabled all right next up survivor fence parties being reset and other quality of life issues so basically um every time you play with your friends in this game at the end of the game you would be sent back to the starting menu and you didn't have a party anymore. Do you guys love that? Because I hated that. That was annoying. It was really annoying. We also had other bugs, such as, for example, Trapper, for several years. His add-ons got unequipped after every match, and playing Trapper without add-ons was not the greatest experience. Do you guys remember no. any other quality of life uh, bugs or, or, or minor bugs over the years that, that stand out to you? Really quick, okay. I want to touch on the Survival with Friends party reset thing. And I want to go a little bit outside of Dead by Daylight, just a little bit. Okay. It's an asymmetrical game, and you have the chance to play with your friends, but then the party resets. It was just like a really bad time for, you know, just 
casual players or what have you. They just want to play with their friends, and now they can't, and it keeps breaking over and over. And yeah. for other quality of life in general, I think they've made a lot of good changes over the years. It's take granted, it's taken like a very long time, mind you. Like our search bar, that's a great quality of life change. Mm -hmm. And um, what is that feature called? It's easier to see scratch marks now. Uh, colorblind mode. Oh yeah, I believe. Yeah, yeah that's nice. Can, can I confess something? I Go have I have habits on this game that I developed during box that I still do and I don't even realize it. So for example, when playing Trapper, there used to be a time when whenever you bend down to pick up a trap, your camera stayed down. So for like, so you bend down, like you look down to pick up a trap and then instead of resetting back to standard, the character would just look down. So in order to compensate it, I would look up to compensate it for. So for many months, anytime I played Trapper and I picked up a trap, I started looking at the ceiling because I had the habit of like looking up to correct it. And also, I noticed one day that every time I reload on my Huntress, I press my Windows key to tab out. Why do I do this? I don't remember. I think I also do it every time I get hooked. And I think it's because there used to be some kind of bug like where there was a really loud sound where you got hooked and you could tab out and it undid it. So I started doing that and I never stopped. And I catch myself doing these things and I'm like, what am I doing? Why am I doing these things? It's kind of crazy the way, and I don't know if you guys remember, but the whole, like, I don't like to hold finger my finger when I do gens. And there used to be a thing where oh. you could do the gen and press escape and then tab out and then oh, yeah. the gen did itself, but then they took it off. So there was like a year or so of the game where you had to hold it. I hated that. I absolutely hated that. Well, I don't know about you guys. That was, that was my favorite bug. My favorite bug was the one where you could be on the gen or on a totem and you could hit escape and then it would just auto do it for you. Mm -hmm. I used to use that every single time. Yeah. I, yeah. I wish they hadn't removed it until they made it a future. That was, uh, that was rough. Yeah. And then the callback to when we were talking about back when if you DC'd while you were loading in, the game would start with like less survivors. There was a period of time where they were having a really bad issue with lobbies. And so like three out of four games, you'd end up with one or more DCs on load in. So like it was so rare to find a four person, a four survivor team, like a five person game. Like it was so rare for like months. That was probably the worst quality of life. I think stretch for me. Cause I mean, I'm trying to play killer on stream, trying to make good content and I'm getting one V threes, one V twos, the occasional one V ones. Like, okay. Okay. Four out of, four out of five you, got, you guys want to know a fun time? Remember when they changed the rankings, which was the matchmaking, into grades, but then they showed the grades in the post game, and every yeah. content creator for the next three months kept getting messages of like, "Hey, I'm silver one, and I'm playing with gold and bronze dudes, and I'm red, so why am I playing with bronze? Or I'm bronze, so why am I playing with silver?" They didn't like it was one of the weirdest things. That the developers did and nobody understood it and everyone was so confused about it they yeah, had to hide the they had to hide the the ranks in the matchmaking so that people wouldn't be confused yep that uh, reminds me that. yep back in the day as soon as the game came out you could see like someone's prestige and dodge them if you wanted or what have you yeah uh, people had programs back in the day when it was P2P, to know which person was in their lobby. Uh, and I, I know many streamers did this to dodge stream snipers or to maybe help stream snipe someone. And I also heard that some streamers had a program that allowed them to reset their rank. It would be like resetting your MMR. So basically, just imagine that, you know, at the end of my stream, um, I, I end the I end the stream, I close the game, and I open a little notepad, and I change my MMR from my high to like the lowest. And then tomorrow I play, and I play with babies. And then I rank up, and then I do it again. So I heard that there were a lot of streamers that did this, because they didn't want to play at the that, higher yeah. ranks. What, what's your take people, on this? People, people, people blamed matchmaking. They were like, oh, the queues are longer at red ranks, so I'll just reset myself back to purple. <laughs> to or reset myself right. back to yellow. <laughs> Uh, yeah, they would just get baby killers and killers would get baby survivor teams. It was, yeah, it was pretty rough. Wow. It wasn't interesting to me. I just played at my own rank and 
you know, I got what I got. It's uh, you it guys. You, you guys remember that back in the day, uh, every X time there would be a rank reset, and everyone would go back to rank twenty, which was it's like basically resetting the MMR. So there would be like a time where everybody played together, and that was really really wild. People went super sweaty on that because they thought that was my chance to bully players that are worse than me, and that was super super strange. And there's also the whole thing when you prestige, you also lost every item. Do you guys remember these things yeah. fondly? We're now we're now in the category uh, of like uh, rank resets, prestige resets. How do you guys feel about it? I didn't like going back to rank twenty for the aforementioned what I just said. You know, the average person doesn't want to go into a video game, and if you're at a certain level, or in other words, you have like X amount of hours, and you go against, take us for example, like if Running Man has thirteen thousand hours, and he goes against someone with. 25 hours how is that fun for him right not, yeah it's not yeah and people would race like one day after if you saw three guys that were rank one you were like wow these guys are serious or wow this skill is serious nowadays i feel like the grade means nothing so people really don't pay much attention to it and yeah. we're now at the end where we're gonna have a moment to discuss any other issues that you guys maybe think of? I have a picture of Myers with the chainsaw, and I think maybe some people want context on that, but uh, what can you guys tell about DVD's history? All right, well, that was the holiday bug. Uh, there used to be like a there used to be like a theme at any time behavior went on vacation, like there'd be some massive bug in the <laughs> game that would go unfixed for like three weeks. Um, but yeah, there was a period of time there where you could you could like swap killers around to where you could have like a, a chainsaw and Myers mm -hmm. or any number of or like Trapper, I think could have a chainsaw as well. Oh my God. I remember, yeah. I, I remember also the times when you could load in with two killers and people figure out a, a oh, way yeah. to do it. And that made for yep. some really, really funny content and some really funny videos. Yep. And I do remember that a bit fondly if I'm, if I'm honest. Um, yeah. I remember going against I remember going against an Oni and a Huntress at the same time one time. We were we were playing together, yeah. Yeah. Oh my yeah. god. Yeah, we yeah. played offline and like one of us noticed there was an Oni, then it was like, no, there's a Huntress, and we're like, wait, what? Yeah. All right. So I'm gonna ask you a question to to send it off and call it a day if that's okay with you all. Sure, what right. is one thing in the history of DVD that was absolutely horrible that is a good thing that it's gone, but that you kinda miss a bit, uh running man? Oh no. Um I mean shout out Frank's mixtape, I guess. Like the original Frank's mixtape was pretty nice. <laughs> um or I'm, maybe I'll just you know what? I'm gonna I'll take the easy one. I'll go, I'll say the I, I would love to get Noed reverted back one nerf. Just okay. one nerf. Give All us right. give us Noed with the totem so it's still got counterplay, but give us a little surprise on the totem. Fair That's enough. What I want. Fair enough. That's honorable. Uh cope. Oh boy. Um, maybe a survivor perk, maybe an offering, maybe an old map or an old part of the map or something that was stupid but that you kind of miss. Something that I miss, uh, just as a general question, I really hated Larry's back then because mm -hmm. it was an indoor map. Yeah. But I absolutely miss it because it was also a very unique map. There's nothing else like it right now as of today. Oh. I absolutely miss Larry's as a map. Oh, now we do have a, a bunch of other. Uh, you mean Larry's or Hawkins? I think you mean Haw I think you mean Hawkins, right? You're talking about the stranger. Hawkins, Hawkins. Uh, thank you. Because Larry, yeah. Larry's still Larry's in. I, I thought he meant like no. the old Larry's. Yeah. No, Hawkins. No, no, you're right. Hawkins. Larry's Hawkins was a very unique map. It felt like you were yeah. almost playing a different game, and not a bad one. Like it was. It was great. I loved it too. The thing I missed the most, personally, that I didn't abuse too much, was underground trapper traps. Like Trapper used to have so many stupid things where you could hide traps at like like a few inches under the ground in a lot of spots, and he was so evil. And and another thing that you could do is you could begin to set up a trap while you were falling, and the trap would be mid mid air, and he would catch the virus. And he was so funny. He gave me so much joy for a little bit until I thought, okay, this is kind of evil. I should never do it. But that's Maybe it. that one. Were you that one really quick placing traps in the killer shack and they were invisible pretty much? 
Yeah, and you could also place I them agree. at the top of the stairs, and you could place them at the top of literally any any difference of elevation. You could place a trap that was invisible, and it would be like playing against a rusty uh, hackle, like a rusty shackle hag, but like way way worse because survivors were like, "I see nothing," whoop, and they stepped on like a landmine. <laughs> Oh, so yeah, that was a great time. Oh my god, Good Trapper! Job. Trapper was legit, such a menace if you knew how to exploit that. Uh, but um, kudos to Behavior. As soon as we reported that, they fixed it real damn quick. So yeah, hopefully yep. every other issue that you're experiencing in DVD today also gets fixed as quickly as they fixed Trapper bugs. And that's been all. Thanks so much for coming to our chat with Running Man and Cope, who you can find on twitch very frequently uh, i believe copa has a new channel that we're gonna uh, link up and uh on on youtube as well so please check out this wonderful gentleman and thank you so much for watching i'll be seeing ya goodbye running man and cope it's been a pleasure goodbye see bye. ya